Hey folks! Hi! I know, we're live and it's not a Friday. It's not Friday or five o'clock. No. Um, although, uh, I do want pizza. Well, yeah, you did say. You're like, well, I just didn't feel right to have a live stream and not have pizza tonight. I know, maybe I have a pizza. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I don't know. Hey, oh. Beth and Slash and Cat Axon, what's up, y'all? Uh, so we'll hang out here a little bit, see if anybody else wants to show up, and then, um... It's distracting me. Oh, sorry. Here, I'll I saw here. my hands going like this, and then I saw your hands doing that. Yeah, my hands were doing that. What, on Thursday, and we get pizza? Well, I mean, I'm not gonna... I might have pizza. I don't Taco know. Let's see how it goes. No. We had Taco we're, Tuesday. We did have Taco Tuesday. So we're probably gonna have boring dinner tonight. I'm, I'm, I feel bad, but we have some meat that we need to finish eating and it's just not exciting lunch meat yeah i heard it was you said it was good it was good actually well, it's but fun um hey it is your friday lisa nice yeah there you go no get papa paper what's up Adam i mean and you know if you're watching australia then it's tomorrow right and hella early right like 5 a.m or yeah something. or like six <laughs> yeah yep yeah Hootie who indeed. Hootie who? Yeah, we don't do a lot of uh, midweek streams here, but mm -hmm. every once in a while. Aw, my neighbor just said really appreciate us taking the trash cans up and down every week. Oh, that's nice. That's good. Yeah, lunch meat for dinner. It's a Cajun turkey. So again, it's not exciting, but... We're going to have it in a sandwich. It's not yeah. going to be like a fistful of meat. I'm no, not Chad we're going to have like bachelor. sides and stuff with it. So it's going to be a meal. Maybe I'll make it into a panini, so we some pressed meat. You know? If I keep it going for two hours, it'll be dinner there or tomorrow there. Where are oh. you, Slash Dot? Um, yeah. All right. Fistful, <laughs> fistful of meat. That's a good. That's the new title. Beefy mitts. <laughs> Beefy mitts. That's my mitts. Fistful of meat. Oh, Luxembourg. Luxembourg. Oh, that's awesome. Very cool. So we uh, uh, <laughs> it comes up later over there, and that distracted yeah, I know, me. I know. I uh, know. So Audrey, I was gonna say we, but really this is all you. Oh. Um, keeps track of uh, a website that uh, like does reviews of all kinds of subscription boxes and Just things. All kind. There's sub sub subscription boxes for most things out there. Yeah, uh, my subscription addiction is that what yep. it's called? Yeah. Yeah. So if you wanted to like learn about, uh, uh, I can't say the word subscription. It's boxes, a hard word to say. I sometimes. Yeah. Uh, then go check that out. Uh, slash must be Fabio. Oh, it could be Fabio. Uh, it's a double broad. Must be then. Yeah, um, that's right. So uh, <laughs> I saw that graphic you put up in the Slack too. That, that was awesome. really funny. Yeah. I liked it. Um, and so one of the things she found was this box. You should tell people about this box. Oops, I don't want to put that. Because it has our address on it. Yes. <laughs> but it's a green box. No, it's no, a it's blue a, box. It's a blue box, and it is called the Universal Box of Yums. Yep. This month happens to be Scandinavia. So basically, every month they do a different theme. So I would say a different country, but it's not necessarily a country, because this month it's Scandinavia, which is obviously a group of countries. Um, sometimes, it, I know the next month will be the Philippines, so that would be some interesting tropical flavors, I would guess, which... I'm not always a lot okay. Of mango, perhaps. I love mango. I might mm. give it a try. I am allergic to mango, but I don't, I don't, know. I don't know. Love mango. No, I don't know about that. Yes, Katie's here. Scraggles is back here behind Mike. She, I, there she is. I know most of you guys are here for the animals. Nose is sleeping on the back of the couch right now. But you get a random assortment of different foods from it's that not random place. it's curated C a cu yes it is curated no, you're not gonna get and my they just have a, a wide variety of things that you can actually try out and i thought it'd be fun i know we did the bamboozled beanboozled beanboozled you know what but how long ago that was that forever been? ago but so Back this isn't gonna be as bad oh no this is gonna be good but it's who knows what you're going to get, basically, from different places. You're going to get a lot of different uh, tastes. I do know what's in them. But we, so this is one that we I did open it, and I saw the review, and I was like, this would be a fun thing to show. Well, hopefully you guys think it's fun. So, um, yeah, so we got this one. So I have seen what's in it. Mike's seen what's in it. Hopefully next time I'll try and not open it before we start, because <laughs> I don't know. I just want to open it. 
but I want to see what's in it. Is that like, weird? Like, we, I, think, we think different things are fun. I so did, yeah. I think the surprise of opening the box is the fun part, and she thinks the, like, actual tasting of the stuff is the fun part. Yeah. So, like... What do you guys think? Which is, <laughs> which is the fun part? Yeah. I think the actually... See, you know, trying of it is the exciting part. Yeah, I really like getting uh, these boxes. Or I, I used to get a bunch of them, actually, um, because I like the surprise. Like, I want to open it up and be like, cool, that's what's in there. And then I put it yeah. away, and I'm that's that's what Hi, I wanted Jose. out of it. Hey, what's up? Cure random, indeed. Okay, yep. All right, you, there's not room for you here right now. Sorry, you little bowling ball. Look at this, Look at this cat. It's a bowling ball. Look at ball. this cat belly. Not cat, bowling ball. There you go. See, tasting the fun for the food, but opening the box is fun if not that's true so this is edible that's why mm. it's you know is exciting but also it comes with like apparently there's trivia and little things in there so as we go through the box it gives a little information on what's in here mm -hmm. and also some trivia so we're gonna go ahead and uh i guess the first question is what countries make up scandinavia <laughs> i don't know <laughs> I, mean, I mean if you looked at the map that i showed then you they might are have... uh denmark norway sweden finland Iceland. Iceland? Did you say Iceland? Where? Oh, in Iceland. Yep, out there. Oh, and also, if you know any of those languages, if we're going to say them, they're not going to be right. I have, it's going to be bad. I yeah. have no Scandinavian yeah. countries in my background, so this is going to be pretty bad for you, and I apologize ahead of time. We have, uh, it has some stuff about the places these are usually found. We've got um, Katie Cat. Curry. I know, we, you don't need to be up here. Uh, we Zero have here this, mm. this fun thing that's like best, worst, weirdest for each one of these things. Yep. Iceland doesn't like to be included in Scandinavia. Interesting. Well, huh. What are you going to do? I mean, I am i don't know. I wonder why. Hmm. I mean. I don't know, man. Yep. Um, in April, blue whales, the world's largest animal, begin their migration to Arctic Scandinavian seas. That's special. There you go. Trivia. We, right. Well, we missed it, but yeah, we did. It is cat yeah. versus it's Mike day. It's still March. It really is. She is really all up in my business here. Yep. Um, Iceland is part of Scandinavia? Question mark. Cat versus Mike day. Nordic countries. Yep. I'm from yep. Sweden. This should be fun <gasps> and horrible. <laughs> oh, well. I no, think it's going to be mostly fun. Um, yeah. So these aren't. They could have gone crazy with this. And there are. There might be some weird stuff. What does Bjork say? Oh, know. right. Iceland is geographically neither part of Europe or North America. So, actually, on this thing, you've got, like, this stuff over here. And then, like, way over here, it says Iceland. I didn't even see it. So, yeah. you know, I get it. Yeah. You are sitting on my keyboard and causing a ruckus. I'm going to have to throw you out if you don't quit this. Hey, Nancy. So behave yourself. No subscription boxes stink because it's samples, which is good for ink. But for other stuff, it just means I'm surrounded by what feels like hotel toiletries I never get around to using. I used, what was that one I used for so long with the, like, men's... Birch box for men. Birch box for men. Yeah. I always had cool stuff in it. I don't remember why I stopped it. I think I just, like, I'm like, I have enough. I Yeah, I think that. And once in a while, you got, like, do, like a, the same thing again. You're uh, like, eh, I already It's already been years, this, though, so maybe you I'll probably, try it There's been a lot more things... Mm -hmm. That you had not tried. Yeah. I used to get Loot Crate. That was a fun one. Oh, yeah. I used to get that. 5-4, um, yeah. which is a clothing one. Yeah. But nothing, like, there's always something in there that just didn't fit me. So, I don't know. Uh, Denmark likes to be included in Scandinavia. Oh, I think they're, are they on here? Yeah, they're, they're, they're on here. Yeah, Denmark. Denmark's here. Yeah. Maybe you didn't miss uh, it and didn't say that one. Could be. Um, have small mm -hmm. writing. Mike has a letter for me. I want a sig. What size would you recommend? Love stubs, says Nancy. I, oh, I go with medium. But that's just me. It's just small writing, though. Like a fine sig is Small writing. Good. So, yeah, my personal one would be a medium. But if you have small writing, I would probably go with a fine. Hmm. Extra fine, the variation is just not as striking. So I would probably go with a fine. It's pretty pretty mild. Yeah. yeah. So it depends on if you're, mine, if you're okay with a little bit more of a, a subtle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, Audrey will be going back to work next week. Yep, officially full time. Well, the... I worked a couple yeah. times this week. But it's back to every day. Mm-hmm. Yep. So those cigs will be uh, flying out the doors. What's up, Feta? Yep. All right, so let's get into this box, huh? Yep. Uh, do you want to yeah, do, do the description? Yeah, do you guys want to do the trivia stuff, or do you want to actually do the food stuff let's first? Let's do the trivia second. Let's do the food okay. first. Okay. Let's get on this food. Okay. Um, well, I'm still doing... My nails are still drying. Okay. So you can open, and I can read some stuff. It would be terrible, and if I have, if I can't say something, <laughs> you get then, to pronounce all the things, and you can show things. Uh huh. Firstly, is this Kim's snack chips? Um, 
Super Sprod Original. Potato snack with assorted spices. Love or spices? That's the question many male Danes faced in the 19th century. Due to their extensive travels, Danish spice traders often remained unmarried, earning the nickname Pebersvens or Pepper Dudes, basically <laughs> bachelors. Today, this bit of history has spawned a spicy modern tradition. If a Dane is single on their 25th birthday, their friends tie them up and coat them with cinnamon. If they're still single on their 30th birthday, they're doused with pepper. We'd probably opt out if we had the choice. Think of the sneezing. Unless the tradition involved getting coated with these uber popular cracker chips with cayenne, garlic, and paprika. Which are all things that I like. These are uh, best before, basically, uh, next month. 6-7-2020. Cool. Almost expired. Sounds good. Yep. Good. Oh, yeah. Not Friday. All oh, right. the press. Good job. Woof. Dude. <laughs> that would be the last one. But, yep. um, I mean, I like the ridges. Just looking at the packaging, I like the ridges. Hmm. Do you want to show what the one looks like? Oh, yeah. This is a Kim's Snack Chips. Super Sprod Original. They're European. It's July 6th now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's over. All right. You ready? Zink it and zink it. Yep. What do you think? I want to see if I can eat the cayenne cake at the end. Mm. Okay, this has a lot of it on it. So it, it sort of reminds me of a very crunchy chip with... Um, I bet they love to see and to hear that. Mm. Um, <laughs> it reminds me of chips that have seasoned salt on them. It's not as intense as that. It's what? a pretty mild flavor. Mm -hmm. I dig these. I think they're really good. Yeah. I, you're right. It's probably um, day and then month. That's one. That's what it is. Yeah. You're I right. I mean, it doesn't matter. They're still good. But, <laughs> geez. <laughs> yeah. Are we going to eat all of the bag? I don't think we should do that. But I could. The, these are really good. I, If they had them oh, in really the U.S., mm -hmm. I would get these again. Mm-hmm. Good job, Kim. Good job. Yeah. I would have that. It's mm. weird. It's capital K, lowercase i, Big M. capital M. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I do taste a lot of the onion powder. They're they're oniony. Yeah. They're on the verge of sort of reminding me of a Funyun taste. You know it's weird? I've never had a Funyun. Never had a Funyun. I like onions. Come on. Oh, she wants some chips. Come on. Jump up. You have two months to eat them. Opening the bag doesn't <laughs> just ah. change the expiration. Mexico, we have chips similar to those. Hot put, sauce. Uh, oh, now that's uh, A little bit of lime on yeah. there. We do have hot sauce and lime. Yep. Oh, and there are three different sizes of these boxes. We got the smaller one mm. to see, well, is anyone interested in watching us eat random foods from different countries? Or, so we got the smallest one, but there's a medium and a large one as well. Audrey really wants to get the massive one. So. I don't want, I want to get the medium. I think it has a nice, you know, mix. Funyuns are all over Texas. That's true. They totally are. Mm -hmm. It's not because I haven't seen Funyuns. I've just never had them. I don't they, know why. I just never have. They're not as strongly oniony as Funyuns, mm -hmm. but they sort of, in the back, yeah. sort of has that flavor. Like a little bit of uh, onion powder or something. But I, I like know. this texture a lot more than Funyuns. Couldn't tell you. Well, I'm just telling you. <laughs> I'm yeah. telling you guys, I like yeah. the texture of these. They're crunchier. They're not as foamy, I guess. As I, it's been years since I've had Funyuns, though. All right. Uh, well, let's put this... Uh, you want to rank them? Is there a ranking thing? Yeah. Best, second best, worst, and weirdest. I wish we, we had can, like a little thing that we could be like, we could, first. Good, good and, Mythical Morning this yeah, thing? Yeah, right. You know, in the future, we probably can. We could just have a little... I can put this table behind yeah. us. We can totally do that. You had me a Funyun? All right. Well, if you can find, well, the other thing is you can go on their website and they have some of these things to purchase. Or you can put maybe Amazon. I don't know if the Amazon. Well, Google it. Kim's Super, Super Spread Original Chips. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, that's What's going in next? the middle because we haven't. Yep. All right. Uh, next is another Kim's product, American Grill. American Grill. Potato chips with grill seasoning. 
Hmm. We'll be totally honest with you. We have no idea why these chips, a hugely popular snack in Norway, are marketed as American Grill flavor. For one thing, the combination of spices, onion, tomato, paprika, and chili pepper, isn't especially popular or typically used for grilling in the U.S., nor are the spices unique to America, for that matter. Paprika and chili pepper both originated in Mexico. What, can we, what we can explain, however, is why these chips are so beloved by Norwegians. Just take a bite. Once you've experienced the spicy kick and incredible crunch, you'll be wishing that your barbecue tasted more like this. What are your thoughts on barbecue chips? I'm not usually a fan. I'm really picky about barbecue mm -hmm. and barbecue sauce. Mm -hmm. And so I really haven't done barbecue chips. Like it's not a, it's not a thing I, I don't ever buy them, you know? I do mm. like a barbecue chip. So I'm well. probably going to like this more than you. Davis says Cool Ranch Doritos are called Cool American in most places in the globe. Really? <laughs> That's kind of awesome. I mean... You don't like Cool Ranch Doritos. I'm not a huge fan. Does it say Damp Lucky Potato? Actually, it says Damn Lucky Potato with an it apostrophe. It does say potato? that. Wow. Uh, there it is. Damn Lucky Potato. Uh, made in Sonderso. And when you're hungry for fun. I'm hungry for with fun. With an arrow at that chip. Well, these right. look good. Are they different? They are different in terms of how the chip looks. So oh, it's yeah. pins as well, but it's more like a, a regular potato chip with yeah. ridges. All right, let's get in like there. Like a, a ruffles, it looks like it's Yeah, it does sound like barbecue. That's what I like said, too. They're like, we don't know why ruffle. you'd have this on grill, but it sounds like barbecue sauce. Yeah. How's it smell? It smells like a potato chip. Mm-hmm, yeah. There's a little bit of a barbecue smell to a it, actually, bit. I think. These aren't really... This is like a regular chip. There's not too much, too many spices or anything. If you tell me this is a ruffles, I believe you. I would think this is a ruffle as well. It looks a little darker though in terms of the frying. Well, yours looks better than mine. It's okay. Little, all right. Scraggles thinks she wants some. More like rib rub. I think that's actually rib rub. I think is actually dead on for this. This is good. I like it, too. It's a good chip. A little bit smoky. Mm -hmm. Nice crunch. Fried enough. I'll eat another one of these. Mm -hmm. A good one of scraggles. You want a chip? She's very dainty. <coughs> she's too. Yeah. I would eat a bag of these. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Definitely more flavor than the other ones. Yeah. Do you like these more? The I don't know. I... I might like the other ones a little bit more. The flavor is good on these, but they're a little bit on the greasier side. They are. Like yeah. these are more of a potato chip. I and like these are the more texture like a, on those. These are more like a cracker. Almost. almost, yeah. Like baked versus fried or something. Go get it's some. Like, yeah, go get some snacks. You guys eat some snacks with us, right? Like you can kind of, you can kind of see this is yeah. like a greasier chip in this one. Mmm. Yeah, both of, Kim knows what she's doing here. This I'm has got such lie. a good crunch to it too. These uh, super sprod. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Grill means barbecue, but the way I understand it, barbecue is really or specific in America. So I don't. Yeah, there's lots of different kinds of barbecue. This is yeah, yeah definitely more of a smoky. Barbecue is a method of cooking and yeah. not an appliance. Appliance. Yeah. So. Uh, all right. So which one? Sunflower seeds. Which one you like better? I'm gonna go with the super sprod. All right. Well, what do you think? Yeah, I'm okay with that too. Well, those are both very good. I would buy snacks either of those. at the moment. We mean, go get some snacks. Hit the pause, you know? It's fine. That's right. Snack on vegetable slices with yogurt? Yeah, you can totally do that. That's yeah. good. Yep. Barbecue is a thing you do in your backyard. You do yep. do it in your backyard. That's yep. accurate. Uh, but you barbecue on a grill, potentially. Mm -hmm. um, which one of these do you want? The big one or the little one? It's up to you. Let's do this one. Okay. Draumur. It's Draumur. Milk chocolate with salted caramel crispies. This yum is a dream. No, really, the word dramur means dream in Icelandic, and you thought we were being dramatic. As you're about to discover, the dreaminess of the dramur bar goes far beyond its name or even its extreme popularity in Iceland. Its silky milk chocolate and salty sweet crispies will make you feel like you're floating on fluffy cocoa clouds basking in the warmth of a caramel sun. Okay, fine, maybe it's a little dramatic, but let's see you taste this bar and try to tell us any different. Mike doesn't really care for caramel. I do love caramel, I'm, of course. I'm pretty much, 
I'm fairly indifferent to caramel. Like, I don't really have a, pro I don't yeah. have a problem with it. I don't and this is like a like full it. bar. So, they're not huge bags of chips, but they're normal ones you get like, like a normal guest. normal snack bags, yeah. yeah. All right, let's get in here. Yep, chocolate and salty is a great combo for sure. And little, like, crispy rice things? Yeah. I'm into that. Yeah. Is it crispy rice things? Is that the deal? Yep. Caramel crispy puffs. Yep. So is it, I wonder if it's going to be, like, a crunch bar. Or what else is crunchy like it's that? Got a, it's got a cat. Where? Oh, there it is. Oh, that's cute. I wonder what the story is with that. There are parts of the USA that disagree about barbecue versus grilling. Yeah, some people are yeah. wrong. Oh, this is two. Oh my god. I goodness. couldn't get I couldn't just break one, so this ah, is this, I got one on this one. So this one is looks like the caramel's just a mm. part of it because there's no like, you know, caramellos yeah. that have the thing in the center. This is just a solid the solid one that sort of smells. This is nice because this chocolate looks really nice. It's not shiny. Mm -hmm. In the US, you know how chocolate always looks shiny because they put a lot of wax and stuff in it's it? It's tempered. Sure. Dink. What do you think? This is good chocolate. It is very good chocolate. I mean, it's a milk chocolate. But yeah, it is milk. Yeah. It's a really good milk chocolate. In the middle of it, I all of a sudden got a burst of salt. Yeah, me too. And I, I did, at first I didn't like, I don't really taste the saltiness, but bam. And then I went back and it's, it's a very creamy chocolate. Yeah. Very good. Hmm. Not very many crispies either. No, a little, little, bit. little bit light on the crispies, but... Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. There's enough there for interest. Yeah, there's no... Mm -hmm. There's not like caramel in it. Mm -mm. It's Caramel is like part it's of the situation. It's probably part of the, the creaminess that you're tasting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I dig it. I can dig it. This is good for another year. Solid year. No, this one is Icelandic. Yeah, Icelandic milk chocolate and salted caramel crispy puffs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, I got a lot of saltiness again in there, too. Mm. Yeah. There's, it's salt forward, but in you a really good way. You can't have this one, sweetie. You would die. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At least it's milk chocolate. <laughs> a little dog face. Do you want to get in my lap? Would you like to come up? Come on. I think she just wants food. Skyx, jump up. Come on. Come on. Yeah, yeah there we go. I have Scraggle a says dog. hello. There yep. we go. Scandinavian set. Well, they say they have all the places that they're from, so... Um, I don't know. This is Reykjavik. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go for this one. Mm. This is the, oh, well, I don't know. Can we, can we still do the ranking thing? Cause this is not a chip. Mm -mm. For me, it's below chips, but that's cause I'm not really a huge, well, really? I'm not a huge chocolate bar mm. person. I'm more of a chip or a cookie person, you know? I, Hi. I really like this. Mm. It's not like any of the candies that we have here. Okay. It's normal. They're all things that would normally be in the U.S., but... So if you want to rank it higher, I'm cool with that because, mm. Mm. like, it's not a thing you can really get here. Like, we could go to the store and find something roughly similar to these things, maybe. Certainly the American mm. Grilled Chips, which were darn good. Yeah. But, like, good. the Super Sprods, those are harder... That would be harder to figure out what it would be like. Texture-wise, it's not like... I mean, we'll go ahead and put this at the top so I far. I know, we'll see. We'll it's it's see. unusual. Do we have really to? It. I don't know. We'll I see. don't know if we do. I think it's just for fun. Okay. Space. All right, now we have the Karen Wolf Choco Flogger. Choco Flogger. Now you get flogger. to say the other thing. Oat cookies with oh. cocoa filling. This says classic. Class. Classic Haverkager. 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 That's what I'm going to say. Yep. Here we go. The story might sound like a Hans Christian Andersen tale, but it's real. In 1864, Karen Wolf was born in a tiny mm -hmm. village in Denmark. So this is a Denmark one. As a teen, she worked as a kitchen manager, developing her skills as a chef and businesswoman. By age 26, she'd saved enough money to fulfill her dream, opening a bakery. Her treats soon won over Copenhagen socialites. Her business exploded, and Karen Wolf became a household name. The best part, her happily ever after is a happily ever, or her happily ever after is a happily ever after for us too. 150 years later, we still get to savor her crispy chocolate filled cookies. It says, oh, we call them uh, chocolate flarn in Sweden and she loves them. Oh, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to it. It's, a, it's, it's a nice packaging it action. Is. 
I don't want to get in here without wrecking the whole bag of things. Bring out my package, my cookie opener. There is, um, we are getting some salt, salty licorice in just a minute, just so you guys know. They Probably did not a double broad has changed his name and uh, says he knew oh. they had those in Goatburg. Oh. oh, these are fun. Those are fun. That's what these look like. No, Scott goes, you can't have these either. Mm -hmm. They're chocolate. They'll make you die. Yeah, can't have. Nope, can't have them. You can watch us have them. Are these? Whoa. They're two, they're Wait, no, there's two stuck together. Nope. Let me out. I think it's a I think it's like a sandwich cookie. It's got chocolate in between. That's what's going oh, on. Oh they here. are. So yeah. yeah, they're got chocolate already. <laughs> I'm not even gonna try to say that one, Sebastian. Ooh. <laughs> so Jingle good, man. Wish I had snacks at home right now. Mm, gotta have snacks at home. Yeah, so these are a sandwich cookie. Oh, I already binge it because I thought you did. Mm-mm. Mm. Very crunchy. Mm-hmm. What do you think? I would eat a tube of these. Yeah. Or a sack. Not too much chocolate. Very nice crunch. No, chocolate is a, it's a great chocolate. It's great buttery nice to it. Yeah. It's a very crispy, buttery cookie. Mm-hmm. Here's the inside yeah. of that cookie structure. You're going to see what's going on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good. Jungle, Jungle War. Oh, uh, yes, mukbang. Well, it's not quite a mukbang. No, but... <laughs> not enough of that. No. I think this chocolate is actually really, really good. Mm -hmm. It's not a, It's not like the milk chocolate mm -hmm. of the chocolate bar. Yeah. But it's not exactly a dark chocolate. It's just kind of in-between-ish. It is in-between, yep. It's got a good flavor, but mm -hmm. not overpowering. Mm -hmm. You definitely get a good balance. Yep. These are really good. Like, could you hmm. compare this to something that you can get from, like, the Keebler Elf sort of the Keebler stuff? Nothing I can think of. Uh-uh. There you go, Kimberly. When he says it's pronounced Jungle Roar, is that one with the D-J-U-N-G? Oh, really? Okay, well. Yeah. Oh, dude, you put some strawberries with this? Oh, my gosh. That would be really good. You the, like, strawberry compote sauce you made the other That's... day? Dip that in there? It must be amazing, yeah. This is very good. A little bit of sour? Yeah. That sounds really good. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Original Choco Flogger. I should stop eating it because this is not exciting to eat this whole cookie. That's their problem. But these are, yeah. <laughs> They're a good cookie. So, just putting these above the other chocolate thing? Yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. In terms of the candies, like, this is this is top so mm -hmm. far. Not even close. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a pretty good chocolate bar, but like I said, I'm not a chocolate bar person, really. I'm a mm -hmm. cookie person. Yeah. Mmm. That Karen really knew what she was doing. Did she need to talk to the manager? <laughs> <laughs> she was Karen, yeah. Okay. I'm almost done. Mm. The next thing is going to be interesting. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. We have two left, too. And great packaging, so they arrive so they're not broken. Mm hmm Yeah. The grilled chips are a little crunched up, but not too much. No. I've had worse Less than that than from I've... a gas station. Yep, same. All right, so this last one is the one that they're like, <gasps> you're probably not going to like this. Yeah. Uh, which is, uh, <laughs> which is as, uh, who, who is it? This is it? Dave said, wait till you get to the salted licorice. That's what this is. Salted licorice. Hopefully they give you an Icelandic one and not the Danish version. I don't know. Where is this one from? Mm, I don't know. I don't know either. It's from Finland, actually. Yeah. From Helsinki. Helsinki. World famous salty licorice. Made in Helsinki. Yeah. Yeah. So, Salmiaki Mato. In Finland, salty licorice, as the Salmiaki, is nothing short of a national treasure. Locals literally refer to it as black gold. And yet tourists often wind up spitting it out. <laughs> what makes it the sweet so divisive? It's made with salmiac, which is ammonium chloride, which is so insanely salty. It was once used as a medicine to clear stuffy sinuses. In fact, historians believe that the licorice, 
Salmiak combo was first created to entice children to take their meds, and from there evolved into a local obsession. Ready to see where you stand? Give it a try and decide for yourself. Does it taste like medicine or treasure? Hmm. I'm going to uh, go ahead and go ahead and say that I don't like licorice at all <laughs> except for red. You don't like black licorice. Yeah. yeah. So It's, it's going to be not... a rough day for you. But also, we don't have a trash can here, so you're going to have to swallow it. And we still it. have cookies. Oh, yeah. You can wash it out so, with a cookie. And I have some drink um, here, too. So uh, Dave said, yeah, that should be good closer to Icelandic. Uh, Sebastian says, Finland and Sweden are the only countries that really do salty licorice, and it's great. Salty uh, licorice and milk chocolate is an amazing combo. Well, we're about to have that. Oh. Uh, I'm not looking forward to this. Oh, I'm into it. Uh, and luckily, this is good for years. And looking at the My subscri Subscription Addiction, the person who was reviewing did not like it, but their husband thought it was okay. So. Uh, Dave said he doesn't like the American black licorice either, but he loves this stuff. I prefer an Australian licorice. Oh, yeah, the Australian licorice is bonkers. Yeah. This is what it looks like. No, you can't see it. This is what, this is what it looks there like. There it goes. Yep, normal. Slabs of licorice. This is not... It um, looks dense. Well, they're kind of mushed together, that's true. Yeah. Actually, they're, this is all one piece. Um, use your knife there. Why don't we use that knife? Here's to use your feast scars. <laughs> don't count me a big piece, please. That's yours. This is mine? We'll yeah. cut it in half. How's that? Okay, that's fine. There you go. Knife time. Yes, for uh, cutting it, I decided to use a uh, a Spiderco Pingo, an adorable little. Knife. Hot take, but red licorice is not licorice. It's just a gu fruit gummy. That's true. Nah. All right, you ready? I guess. I don't like Think. licorice. Hi, Clipsy. Hi, Clipsy. Can't see you. What do you think? It tastes like black licorice. Yeah, it actually tastes a lot like the uh, like the Australian like the soft licorice. It's softer than. But it's got a little bit of a Twizzlers. Mm. I do get a little bit. I know what they're talking about with the medicinal thing. Like there's a little bit at the end. It's like a little bit, a little bit medicine-y, but you get like there's a nice salty like overtone. Like if you look at think of it in layers, it's like. Black licorice, salt, and like a little undertone of, what was it, ammonium chloride or some weird thing? Yeah. I think it's actually, I think it's fine. Are you going to eat the rest of it? Yeah, I'll eat it. Really? Yeah. Mm. I actually like it. Oh. Well, yeah. Good. It's... I think it's good. What do you think? I did not care for it. Mm. I wouldn't... You ate it, though. I ate it, yeah. and that's fine, but I just wouldn't sit there and want to eat the rest of it. Mm. That's all. Well, it says this is salted, salty licorice. So, I don't know. <laughs> like gunfire's at high noon. <laughs> yep. Ooh. Tumbleweeds. Uh, yeah, no, I actually, um, yeah, I got no problem with that. I don't know if I would buy a whole bunch of it to eat, but yeah, I, don't think, I can I eat wouldn't, this with I wouldn't no problem. see you would, you would get that. I mean, yeah. there would be, if it was at a gas station and they had lots of other things, you're not going to pick that to eat. Probably not. But, like, if you left me only jelly beans that tasted like that in a bag of jelly beans, say. I do that all the time. She does. But I've been um, better about getting jelly beans that don't, like, the not classic ones, so they don't have the licorice ones. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't mind that. I like these better. No. Jungle Roar. Oh, that's the Jungle Roar. Jungle Roar, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, so not yet. Um, here's the thing, though. There's also this bag. This is the Yum Bag, and it says on the back... You know that phrase, when good things come in small packages? The yum bag is that phrase embodied. As we're searching for the world, as we're searching the world each month for the best yums to bring you, we often stumble upon smaller finds that are big on crazy flavor, but small in size. This bag is loaded with those discoveries. Inside this bag, there will be some yums that you'll wish were there were more of, and others you'll wish we never found. That's part of the fun. Dig in, have a good time. Uh, this is the part I'm most looking forward to. Yeah, it's because you have not seen what's in that. Because I don't know I've, what's in yeah. it. Yep. Um, and also, like, I am looking forward to uh, something totally weird because, like, while these are are different flavors, nothing yep. is nothing is weird. Yep. Like, I think it's, you know, I've liked them all, so yep. hasn't been a problem. All right, let's get in here. I mean, thanks, Greg's. I'm 
just getting hungry. I'm glad we're doing this right now. <laughs> right? Yeah. I was also getting hungry. All right, so yeah. Oh, they do have what those are right here. Oh, oh, and there's two of each, so we're good. So yeah, I do know what these things are, actually. I just didn't know that they were in there. All right, what do we have? Uh, let's start with this little one. Um, pepper, oh. pepper cacks, cola? Gingerbread toffee, it says gingerbread here. Gingerbread toffee is what this is. When it comes to gingerbread, the U.S. and Sweden have a lot in common. Swedish gingerbread, locally known as peppercorn, is traditionally a traditional holiday treat considered essential at Christmas parties. And just like in the U.S., the spice cookies are commonly used to construct elaborately delicious gingerbread houses. But there is one gingerbread tradition that sets Sweden apart from the U.S., and you're holding it, locally referred to as knack. This chewy toffee specialty is infused with the spice flavor of traditional peppercorn, and it's a 100% Swedish invention. What do you think? Is gingerbread toffee one of the one that the U.S. should adopt? <laughs> uh, four words. <laughs> You gotta give me a pronunciation for your name there. Yeah. Uh, pepper cookies. Ha ha. Well, we'll see how it is. Krytor. I don't know what Krytor is, mm -mm. but both of y'all are looking for Krytor, so we'll see how it goes. Like pepper nutton? I don't know. Don't know. I mean, it smell smells good? totally normal. Yeah. There's one for you in the box there. Okay. I just put them in there so they wouldn't roll away. Yeah. Okay. Chewy. Knack, aka the tooth puller. Mm hmm. Yeah. Those only work if you throw them at folks. <laughs> it's almost like a annihilator. It's totally stuck to my tooth right now. Yeah. There's gonna be a thing you like. Excuse me, my. <laughs> it tastes really good. Mhm. Mm Very spicy, but low. Not spice. Not too much on the ginger. I really like the flavor. Mhm. Mm I'm not gonna try to chew this anymore. I think this is the thing I'm gonna suck on. Mm -hmm. It's gonna tear my fillings right out of my face. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm this is you have one of them, and that's pretty much it. I got it out of my teeth, and that was removed from my mouth. Yeah, a lot of kids get their first teeth removed with a knack. <laughs> that makes yeah. Ooh. Eggnog is fine. It's who cares. I don't really like eggnog. <laughs> Whole music I try to eat those toffees. I'm gonna spit it out. Really? Cause I want it later, but we don't have oh. time to eat that whole time. I mean, it just looks like toffee now. It hasn't changed form at all. Mm. Once I sucked on it for a minute, mm -hmm. now I can chew it. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, it's going to tear. I've got more fillings than you do. <laughs> I think it would just tear all my fillings out. And the dentist is closed, so that would be, uh, yeah. <laughs> that would be bad cold. news. Um, I really like the flavor. I think the flavor is great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, man, that is um, intensely chewy. Yeah, okay. Like, I just yeah. was able to finish it. It doesn't taste like toffee, though. It tastes to me like gingerbread. I think it's a toffee and not like toffee the flavor. Yeah, know? I don't think, I think it's toffee mm. as the thing and then it's the flavor. Yeah, it's not too much. Kreidor is a licorice that looks like a chalk you'd use on a chalkboard. Oh, no, I've had that. Yeah, mm. it's covered in a hard white sweet part. Yep, no, I've definitely had that. Yeah. I like those. We would call those here. Um, there's a name for those. Um, good and Plenty's are Kreidor, I think. Are they? Let me see. Are they Good and Plenty's? Sorry, it's hard to type around a water bottle with my right hand. Um, yeah, it looks like looks like this. Uh, Is it like that? Like these? So they show the inside, but it's licorice on the inside, and then like, oh, it went to like horses? Weird. <laughs> <laughs> Should have turned on my safe search. Uh, but yeah, I think that's I think that's roughly similar to what you're talking about. Okay. My parents love black. The word "crayon" is basically a crayon. Oh, not those. Yeah. yeah, so when I when I uh, huh. searched for Kryton, it came up with a crayon. Oh, they're bigger? Yeah, these are pretty small. Like, Good and Plenty is about this big. Which yeah. are not glossy. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, okay. Interesting. But, like, candy wrapped, wrapped around, like, a little licorice sort of situation. Yeah. 
last thing is not cream. This is not cream. Not cream. You can tell because it's hard. Yep. Like a not cream. Cookie dough pralines. What if there was a candy shop that could satisfy your wildest cravings? Well, there is in Sweden at 37,000 square feet. Gottbitten is one of the world's largest candy shops filled with over 4,000 unique sweets. Eucalyptus chews? Hmm. They got them. Turkish pepper caramels? You bet. A chocolate ball filled with cookie dough? Exactly like, like you love licking from the spoon? It's yours. No, really. It's yours. From the moment we tasted it, we knew we had to share this with, uh, with you. It's one in a million. Well, technically, it's one in 4,000, 4, but who's counting? Oh, not equals nut. Oh. All right. Let's get in this. Yeah, we have bonbons in the U.S. This doesn't look like, um, it looks like a, um, what do you call those things? Truffle? It looks like a truffle, that's it. Yeah. Yep. Looks right. like a truffle. I'm just going to cut in half. Same. Oh, okay. Oh. 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 It doesn't look like cookie dough at all, but it tastes exactly like cookie dough. Nuttier, though. You know what it tastes like? It tastes like my Bar Barnum Animal Crackers. Okay. Tastes. Or like a graham or like, cracker. Or like a, like a Teddy Graham, like somewhere in between a Teddy Graham and an Animal Cracker. Yeah. But yeah. definitely a cookie and dough. In creamy form. Yeah. Hmm. What? I love the flavor. It's too creamy. Yeah, if it was a little firmer. Mm. Mm hmm. Oh. I bit into it and it like sh squooshed down the back of my, like, back of my throat. It wasn't. Tastes great, feels weird. I don't think I would want a bag of those. I put my tongue in the center and like squooshed around. Mm hmm. Tastes awesome though. Mm hmm. It's I, good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well played Scandinavia. So what's your favorite thing? Hmm. <clears throat> we'll write it down here on our scorecard. It might have been those cookies. These? Yeah. The choco floggers? Is that weird? No. That's probably weird. Yeah, not great mouth feel for them. A oh, horrible good, mouth feel. Good good taste, but not a great feel. Not as bad as it does for him. I'm going to say those are the weirdest for me. Really? Yeah. Because, um, like, it doesn't look like what it tastes like, and then it, like, feels super weird. So I'm going to say that's the weirdest. None of the rest of this is weird, mm -mm. I don't think. I think that's the weird thing. I mean, the salted licorice I mean, is probably the weirdest, and that people in the U.S. probably wouldn't like it either. Yeah. I think anybody who likes licorice will like that just fine. Like it doesn't, it's not so far from just regular old black American licorice. It's got no, a few extra pro profiles, but not, it's nothing mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah. Mouthfeel is important. Dude, mouthfeel is super important. So what's yeah. your favorite then? So I sort of gave mine away. <clears throat> oh, your favorite was the cookie. Um, my favorite. And that Chaco Flogger is like real high in terms of favorite for me, but... Mm -hmm. I might give it to the Kim Super Sprod. Really? I just can't. I mean, I, what would I have around here that would be like that? I love the way that crunches. It's, it's got nice. such a good crunch. Like, it's it's Still somewhere. Like be it's old Swedish candy, the salt, sweet, and sour. Sounds weird, but I mean, I would try. I, would yeah, try I mean, I'd try it, things. yeah. Hi, how are you doing? Yeah, sure, good looking dog. I think that was probably Scraggle's favorite too, was the uh, the chip. You think? Um, she only got yeah. to try one of the chips, didn't you? I think I'm going to say that's my favorite. Wow, he's going with the Kim's. But super, What was it? Super Sprod. Mike's favorite. That's going to be second favorite for me, though, the, the Choco Floggers. Those are that is a super good cookie. Do I want to make those first? No. No, I want to make it. I want to make my. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stick with the Kim's first. You can first. go back through if you want. Crunch mm. dependence. Yep. <laughs> that's me. Well, like there's a type of crunch that's hey, too Sandra. much. You know, too hard. Like those pretzels I have in there are too hard. I mean, the cookies aren't crazy. I mean, no, do we really have good. things that are similar to that? Sure. 
There's got to be Do like a pepperidge a farm that's kind of close to that or something, you know? Yeah. What's your second favorite? Oh. The chips, the okay. super sprawled. Yeah. That's my second favorite. Which was the worst? I think we know what that is. The licorice for yes. you? Licorice is just not for me. Again, I was expecting it to be worse, to be honest. I think I'm going to say worst for me is the the toffee. What? I really like the flavor, but I can't eat it. Like, I'm going to have to suck on it for six hours. International what? taste test stream on Thursdays? Yeah. I don't know. I, worst is weird in this one because, like, I liked all the things. Yeah, I mean. So it's worse well, in, like, the sense that like I like it the, the least. One. I mean, it was edible, but. No. I'm going to say the. Yeah, I'm going to give worse to that toffee, even though it tastes like delicious gingerbread, and I love gingerbread. It's going to take me two hours to, like, suck that down to a thing you can mm -hmm. chew on. Okay, well. Just because it's going to tear out my teeth. Um, also, the issue of retaining the freshness of cookies and you send this overseas. I mean, in this in this packaging, it's totally fine. Feels so good. we also have some trivia, if you guys are interested in knowing. Number one, <clears throat> which of these companies started in Denmark? Number one, or A, Spotify, B, Ikea, C, Lego, or D, H&M? Bonjour. Hey, Anna. Vote in the chat. Yeah. What do you guys think it is? Matt says show him the thing. What? Like hold it up to the screen. It doesn't have the answers on it, right? No. Yeah. There we go. Number one, Spotify, B, Ikea. Lego or H&M? Well, I mean, it's easy for you. <laughs> yeah, if you know, you know, then. Yeah. I also got it on my first guess. That's the only yeah. one of the one of the trivia that we looked at, and I knew what it was. Uh, the original landmine, Lego. <laughs> Three Swedes and a Dane. Yep. And a French girl. <laughs> yeah. yeah, all right. So it's a runaway uh, for Lego. Yeah. Yep. So it is C, Lego. In 1934, carpenter Ole Kirk Christensen opened a wooden toy company called Lego from Danish led got, meaning play well. In 1949, he pro began producing plastic bricks which, as you know, became quite the success. Today, over 600 billion Lego pieces have been produced, inspiring six amusement parks, four major motion pictures, and 69 video games. But can you guess what, uh, where Ikea, well, Ikea, Spotify, and H&M are all Swedish? I mean, you know, everyone knows that Ikea is, but I yeah, yeah. did not know that Spotify and, and I thought H&M &M was probably, like, British. I thought they were British, yeah. you know, or I knew yeah. they were European, but, yeah, I didn't think it was Sweden. Yeah. So. All right, well, cool. What's the next one? Number two, which Nordic country is the world's number one coffee consumer? Hmm. Is it Finland, Iceland, Denmark, or Sweden? <laughs> Find a little bit of a cheap, a chip. So that's number two. Uh, coffee, huh? I'm gonna go with, man, I don't know. Maybe Denmark? I don't know. And guesses? Who loves coffee the most? I would have thought it would be, like, it's cold, Colombia. It's so... Or, or but... Italy or something, you know? Like, I feel like those are things I... Per, it does not say per capita. No, it doesn't. It's not specific in that way. We have a Norway. Any other guesses? It, there is a specific answer. It's not all of them. Hmm. What did I say? I said Denmark? I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with it. Because why not? So we why? have a little bit of everything here. All right, we're getting, yeah, just kind of everything. Yeah. Iceland, Denmark, Sweden. So yeah, we have quite the mix here. Well, the answer... Is a Finland. The Finland. average Finnish citizen drinks about 26.5 pounds of coffee every year. However, coffee is something all Nordic countries agree on. Iceland comes in third on the list at 20 pounds a year, Denmark fourth, 19 pounds, and Sweden sixth, 18 pounds a year. And each country even has its own version of a traditional afternoon coffee party known locally as the Kaffebad. Kafes Labras and Kafareb. Kafareb. Hmm. 
I think that's probably more coffee than I drank, actually. That sort of sounds similar to what, when I worked at NC State, everyone would sort of come together in the afternoon and have a little coffee chat. We had coffee so. clatch. That was our thing. Yeah. Coffee clatch. It's the dark, dark winter is coffee that gets us through. Nah, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for, yep. like, that's that. more coffee than I drink a year, but, I mean, I go through slightly over a pound a month, I guess. Mm-hmm. So, like, I'm in that range, but... And that's only because I'm, like, kind of lazy. I don't feel like making it all the time. I mean, that's not that my... I mean, they were saying 20? 26. So yeah. you're, to like, 13, 14, maybe. Yeah. So maybe yeah. 15, even, but... Yeah. You know, split 12 about pounds 12. with mine? Yeah, exactly. After the past two months? Well, there you go. Is coffee with cheese just a Norwegian thing, or is it also consumed with other Nordic countries? I mean, I love cheese. I've only heard of it from Norway, Norway yeah, country, I, or, um, Nordic countries. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll go ahead and continue. If you guys want to keep talking about Tucker goes to six with pounds a month. Wow. How, much, how heavy are those bags you get me? A pound, I think. Yeah. No, maybe twelve yeah. ounces, maybe. I cut off the, the weight on a bunch of these. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I cut off the... Oh, no. They're 12 ounces. That's what I... That's what so I'd I probably go through around a pound a month. Yeah. Maybe a bit more. But. 80 grams of beans a day. I, I don't, don't know. Those know. Grams. I yeah. tell you. Number three. <laughs> Iceland is home to over 130 A, volcanoes, B, deer species, C, McDonald's restaurants, or D, medieval castles. So we're on number three. 130, huh. I think it's got to be one of the top one of the top two, right? Volcanoes or deer species? I mean, I mean you can have 130 volcanoes. I have not looked at the answer, so I don't know right now for this one. The other ones I had seen them. Iceland's not that big, you is it? You would think, I mean, you automatically want to say volcanoes because that's what you automatically think is volcanoes but i don't know if they see they're going with volcanoes too obviously uh, there might not be a single mcdonald's um yeah i mean i guess there is zero mcdonald's that's awesome i'm actually <laughs> shocked there's zero mcdonald's anywhere i figured there's one in, they're in cambodia and yeah i don't know um, well are we it looks like everyone's going with volcanoes. They're going are volcanoes going? i'm going deer deer okay N number three is a volcanoes yep Ooh, that's a word you can flex on that because that's yeah. I have, I have fallen, I have fallen oakle. I love an oakle. <laughs> there was a riot when the first one opened. You don't earn the nickname the land of fire or ice and fire for nothing. Iceland is known as a volcanic hotspot located on a tectonic plate boundary called the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. It's home to 130 volcanoes, 18 which have erupted since the island was first settled in 871 CE. In fact, in the past 500 years, over 33% of all lava output on Earth has come from Icelandic volcanoes. So maybe you're Homo sapiens, perhaps. From... No, I'm just kidding. Bring it back to fountain pens. Thank you. I, I did. Mm -hmm. So number four, which of these words is Norwegian slang for totally bonkers? <laughs> A. Rodeo. B, mustard, C, Texas, or D, pickles? I actually know what this one is. Really? Yeah. Is it Texas? And I'm not going to tell you, but I do know what it is. So we're on number four. <laughs> that was what I was doing behind that the whole time. Mount Etna, huh? Interesting. Etna. Like the insurance. Yeah. You gotta vote for Texas. I should know this. You should know this. What was the question? Uh, it's uh, Norwegian slang for totally bonkers. Texas, rodeo. Mustard or pickles. Yeah. Mustard or pickles. I'm guessing Texas because you know this one. I know about rodeos it's, too. I also know about mustard true. and pickles. I'm still going with Texas. I have, I have solid knowledge of all those things. Gonna say rodeo. We got a lot of a uh, lot of Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, some one rodeos. mustard. Nice. I like it. It's a rodeo. Answer is C. Texas. It's Texas. It's totally Texas. Yep. Norwegians use the word Texas the way Texans use a word 
wild. How come? Well, cowboy-filled Western movies and books became extremely popular in Norway in the first half of the 20th century, so much that the locals adopted the word Texas into their vocabulary. <laughs> Nowadays, in Norway, Texas means out of control or totally bonkers. Yeah, Texas is not actually all that bonkers. I mean, I'm... like... It's not, it's not that crazy. Like, it shouldn't be synonymous for, with bonkers. Mm. Like, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> it's no New Jersey. Well, that's true. <laughs> number five, over 4,000 Swedes have A, immunity to the common cold, B, surgically implanted microchips, huh. C, Japanese names, or D, unreleased iPhone 13s. <laughs> what? How many what was this? <laughs> four thousand Swedes. Four thousand Swedes. So we're on the top. Yep. We're number. Four. Oops. Thank there you. You, you have to. Yeah. Uh, no, I can't do one. it. There we go. Immunity to the common cold. No way. No. See, I'm going with surgically implanted microchips. I was gonna say that one too. Do you want to read weird. everything now? Yeah, I can do it. I guess. You did the first half. And uh, we got oh, Japanese, Japanese names. Interesting. That's not a... That's not iPhone a, 13. The iPhone 13 thing threw me for a loop. I don't... Maybe they make a lot of iPhone cases there? No, that, mm. I don't know. That can't be it. Japanese names. No, they're going with They all work at Nokia. <laughs> hmm. Well, let's see. Where are the answers? Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh. The answer... Surprise, there aren't more. The answer is B, surgically implanted microchips. <laughs> Would you pay $180 to have the world at your fingertips? Swedish folks would and did. As of 2020, over 4,000 tech-savvy Swedes have paid, 100, have paid for a $180 surgery to implant a personalized microchip in their thumb. What does it do? Just about everything. It unlocks doors, acts as a train ticket, shares contact info. As Sweden strives to become the world's first cashless society, the chip will likely take the place of debit cards. Huh. My buddy Chris and, has one. And 4,000 isn't that many, but how many people are in Sweden? Can't be that many. I think it's approximately like twelve million or something. God, of course, it's the Stockholm hipsters who did it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's similar population to North Carolina. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I've actually really considered getting one. I just I don't have enough of a use for it right yet. Yeah. I would, Maybe um, as things start to open, like yeah. other things. For I mean, Chris got one like eight years ago or something. Ago, yeah. It's been a forever. You come over. Um, but he like can unlock his computer with it and do like you know unlock his house with it actually. Which is pretty cool. There you go. So you want to get in Chris's house, you just gotta like grab his hand. So much no to that? Oh, I want it now. Um, yeah, chop right. Some Swedish fingers have to pay for drinks. <laughs> that would be a thing to think about, you know. People what can tearing you... off your hands? Mm -hmm. yeah. Or a finger, yeah. I mean, you really just need the chip. Like it'd be easier to just take the chip. Mm -hmm. And it's like a just like a like a syringe. It's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, number six. It is common for Icelandic homes to have a, grass roofs, B, golden chimneys, C, steel doors, or D, plastic windows. Come on. Focus. There we go. Staple removers. Yeah, that's how you get it out of there, basically. I can't see it, and I don't remember it. It's over there. Oh. No, it's not. <laughs> I don't... I'll say golden chimneys. Hmm. I was going to say grass roofs is my other guess. I'm going plastic <gasps> windows. Really? Why not? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> actually, now that it's either grass roofs or golden chimneys. Okay. I don't know. Well, I'm sticking with plastic windows. Okay. I figure it's like super duper cold there. Maybe the glass will break because it's so cold or something. So you'd like... In Iceland? Yeah. Iceland is not very cold. Greenland's... It's the opposite. It's got I learned that from Mighty Ducks. I did too. A lot of houses in the capital have steel roofs. Oh. Steel roofs isn't, a, isn't an option. Steel doors is. Oh. Um, oh, it's A, grass roofs. Oh, you guys are... That would seem like... I, I've seen yeah. grass roofs before. Yeah. Uh, before we get to the bottom of this surprising fact, we need to mention one unsurprising fact. Iceland is cold. With winter temperatures dropping as low as negative 22 Fahrenheit... Early Icelandic settlers had to get extra creative in insulating their homes. Their medium of choice, grass. Original turf homes were completely covered with grass except for the door. 
Modern versions are partially covered, mainly on the roof. Talk about living green. Also, yeah. that like the prairie of the U.S. Yeah. Like people do grass yeah. roofs. Yeah. Sod roof is make total sense. Saw the grass roots. Roofs, yeah. <laughs> Probably roofs when you were yeah. in Iceland. Yeah. Um, all right. Number seven. Denmark is home to the oldest blank still in use. The oldest ski resort still in use. The oldest automobile still still in use. The oldest sailboat still in use. Or D. The oldest amusement park still in use. Hey, Jesse. I'm going to go with amusement park. I don't know why. I think I'm also going to go with amusement park. Really? Oh, yeah. I thought you were going to be like, oh, that's stupid. I no, I think automobile and sailboat. I'm like, mm, whatever. Ski resort is like, seems like the other... Like, mm. either A or D for me. Mm. Could be totally wrong. Could be car. Who knows? It could, yeah. But, like, I feel like the oldest car is still in use. I, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Somebody's still got, like, a Model A or T or something around. Yeah. It's definitely not ski resort. Mark is the flattest space in Scandinavia. Maybe. Well, there yeah. you go. <laughs> I couldn't have told you anything about the landscape of Denmark. Yeah. <laughs> Unsurprisingly. Well. Um, all right. Yeah, it is D, amusement park. Oh, yeah. Uh, in the latter half of the 16th century, poor water quality caused Copenhagen locals to flock six miles north to a natural spring. The large crowds attracted entertainers and artists at an amusement park known as the Deer Pastures Hill, Deer Havisbakken, uh. was opened at the site. Today, it's the world's oldest running, amuse oldest running park and Denmark's second most popular attraction behind Copenhagen's Trivoli Gardens, huh. which is the second oldest amusement park. They're the first and second. Look at that. Fun gotta go. Bye, Take Tucker. care, Tucker. Uh, yeah, <laughs> change it to amusement park. Wow, I mean, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also gonna. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, number eight. We only got two more. Well, no, there are only nine. There are a couple more other things if you are yeah. interested, but we don't have to. Uh, Sweden is home to the world's largest. Sweden is home to the world's largest a telescope, ship graveyard, model of the solar system, or ice skating rink. Ship graveyard. That's a, that's a dope choice. I don't have any idea if that could be no true. No idea. I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna go model of the solar system. Okay. <laughs> you know this one, huh? Awesome. Sandra's also going ship graveyard. We got another ship graveyard. <laughs> the solar system. Solar system. Model of the solar system. Wow, yeah. good job. <laughs> I mean, I guess I could have actually just looked ahead. Well, you could have. I didn't. I, yeah, <laughs> I haven't either. Uh, you might think a visit to the world's largest model of the solar system would make a fun day trip. Guess again. You'd need a full week to see all the planets as they span 590 miles across Sweden. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Stockholm would be a good place to start where you'd find Mercury, Venus, Earth, and the Sun represented by the Ericsson globe. The largest hemispherical building in the world. What? The globe huh. in Stockholm is the, is the sun. Lost and found for Isaacia screws. <laughs> wow. What? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. You're wow. like, I want to go there and see that. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, I do. Looks like the Death Star. What? All right. Well, we have to go there. If uh, if we ever get to travel, uh, if we ever run, yeah. Sweden is where we're going. All right. A Burger King in Helsinki, Finland features a sauna, a rotating roof, a movie theater, or a penguin exhibit. A Burger King in Helsinki, Finland features a sauna, a rotating roof. Come on. I was going to say sauna, yeah. That's my guess. A movie theater. I don't want to get in a sauna with a bunch of people in a Burger King. That's real gross. Oof. I'm going to go with a penguin exhibit. Really? Why not? What have Wait, I got to lose? Absolutely nothing at all. <laughs> uh, sauna, sauna, 100%. Mm. Sauna, penguin, mm -hmm. sauna, sauna. So, like, you eat Burger King and then just, like, sweat out the you beef sweat? sweat it out and just fart it out <laughs> together. Oh, it is. It's a sauna. Yeah. I mean, I know that the people in Finland like saunas, yeah. but... Saunas are an integral part of Finnish culture. The country has one sauna for every three citizens. 
These steam rooms are used for relaxing, socializing, and even business meetings. And as of 2016, they're used for enjoying Whoppers. Well, you eat it in the sauna? That's weird. You eat Whoppers in the sauna. It's a soggy Whopper. Hot, yeah. soggy Whopper. A Helsinki Burger King features a 15-person sauna where patrons can eat, watch TV, and never worry about their food getting cold, but maybe soggy. Huh. I'm sorry, that's weird. Huh. Then you go outside and dive in the snow. Oh. I don't know about this. Like, here's another fun fact. I've never had a fun unit. I've never been in a sauna. I used to go to the sauna in Ohio when it was so cold. It was really nice. We have a sauna at the gym that I used to belong to. Uh, but I don't know where it is, so I've never been in it. Huh. Yeah. But, uh... Excuse yeah. me. There you go. There's a bunch of other... There's well, there's a, bunch a of few these, other ones. So many. So the there's... next thing is, Iceland is home to what percent of the world's puffins? Puffins are the cute little birds that's sort of penguiny, but with like the bright orange beaks. What's my answer? I mean, they are the right... The same kind of color as a penguin, I guess. Bless you, Audrey. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. I appreciate that. No, I've never had a Funyun. That's, uh, we talked about that earlier, Sandra. No. I don't know why. I just never have. What percent? Of puffins. I'm going to say, Iceland. like, I'm going to say, like, 35% okay, so that's... of puffins. Any other guesses? Puffins? It's going to be, like, 0%. Puffins don't live there. <laughs> that would be awesome if they did that. They're, like, they don't know there. Mike's house is home to what percentage <laughs> yeah. of puffins? <laughs> Bring your funniest next pin show me here. I mean, okay. I, uh -huh. I could just go buy them. Uh, Warren says a lot. 60 or 70%. Yeah, I don't I don't have any idea, man. What do you think? Have you, have you seen the answer? Is it on there? Yes. Oh, okay. I, I have looked. All right, what's the answer? The answer is 60%. Right on. Yep. I wonder where the rest of them live. They're like, uh, like South Pole Critters or North Pole Critters or something. Number two, despite its nickname, the Land of a Thousand Lakes, Finland is actually home to over blank how many lakes? That reminds says a big puffin colony is near Scotland. Interesting. Huh. It's no fun if you buy them. I mean, mm -hmm. so I, should, I should just steal them. Uh, how many lakes? Um... 2,000 2, lakes. I was going to say like 10,000. Like way off. 15 lakes. <laughs> <laughs> you really hope that they're just going to be way off, huh? Yeah, it's the land of... 327, yep. It's the, it's the land of 42 lakes. Yep. Oh, so she wants back up. Well, the answer would be... 187,888. I believe I'm the closest out of those. I said 10,000. It's 100. I mean, I'm way off too, but. That is a nonsense number of lakes. Yeah, I had no idea. Where was this? Finland. Is there any land in Finland? They should call it I Finn mean, Lake. Fin yeah. Wow. That's a lot of lakes. Yeah. Number three, Iceland's... I kind of wonder how they delineate between those lakes. Like, how much room... See, look, yeah, they show how... It's very difficult to mm. try and figure... I don't know if you want to show that, but... Their example of what they were showing. Where are the answers? Not on that page. Okay. Like, like this. Land of 100,000 lakes, huh? 187,000. 200,000 lakes. Iceland's Blue Lagoon Hot Springs still reaches temperatures of what degree Fahrenheit in the middle of winter? Oh, I don't think it matters what season it is if you're a hot spring. Yeah. Um, is it in Celsius or Fahrenheit? Fahrenheit, I said. Hmm. I was... Hmm. I'm going to say 120. Okay, anyone else? What, that's also 120. I'm going to say... Okay. I'm going to say... 110. 212. I was, thinking, yeah, I was thinking something like that too about... 
Like, that seems like it'd be too hot to get into. I feel like these are things people might get into. Maybe not. Well, the answer is... 104. Sandra! Oh, she Oh, she just put... Wow, look at that. Wow. I said, what did I say, 110? Hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. close. Daffy Man and I were fairly close, too. Yeah, you guys were close, too. Yeah. I don't remember salt. I mean, yeah. Did somebody do that math. At what feet the world's 40. highest mm. waterfall is located off the coast of Denmark and it's completely underwater? So how many feet is the world's highest waterfall that's underwater in Denmark? Yeah, I mean, it's about 40. That sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. 40 sounds about right, yeah. Um, I, it's going to be absurd, right? Because it's underwater and there's so yeah, much. I mean... 3,000 feet. Like, two miles. <laughs> I don't know. Is it in feet? Yes. Hmm. I'm going to say 3,000 feet. I'm going to say, yeah, I was going to say like 12. 90 billion feet. <laughs> I said something crazy like 3,000. Santa goes 11,000. <laughs> Probably I'm going closer. To, I'm going to say 50,000. Okay. I'm going to say 89 billion. Just, <laughs> I'm going to price this right, you, David. Price is right rules, yep. Well, the answer is... 11,500. Look at you, Sandra. You said 11,000. Wow. Sandra, are you cheating? I think she's cheating. Well, she's been to... Or no, that was an Iceland one. Yeah, she's been to places. Yeah, she's yeah. been to places, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's... Yeah. A uh, feet... A foot is like a third of a yard. Uh, a third of a... A foot is somewhere close to a third of a yard. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about a third of a meter. It's a little... Under. Norway's famed rock formation, Troll Tunga, or Troll's Tongue, juts out over a how many feet foot drop? Katie. Go ahead, Bob. There's a picture of it if you want to show it. Oh, wow. Sandra, yeah, she gets this, the Universal Yums as well. This one. 11,000 foot drop. It's underwater. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you think? A foot is half a cubit easy. Get out of here. <laughs> um, I don't even know. Um, a thousand. I was going to say like 7,000. Okay. I'll let you. <laughs> okay. Five. Answer is 2,300. Hmm. Senator's way off on that one. Oh, jeez. Ah. What are you doing? Go behave yourself somewhere else. In Copenhagen, there are more bikes than there are people. A whopping what percent of the city's citizens bike to work? 114%. Oh, are we going with Maury here? <laughs> That's right. Maury percentages? Mm-hmm. Are you giving her some Scandinavian treats? She got one. She gave her this toffee. Oh, I don't know <laughs> if that's okay for dogs. It's right. salty anyway. Um, I'm going to say 73% uh, of them bike to work. I'm going to go 82%. Okay. Any other guesses? What we got a 95 out there. 69%, yeah. Nice. 65. Babies on bikes, I say 80%. <laughs> so on number six. So the answer $1. is 62%. <laughs> what did I say? I don't remember. I think I said 65. Okay, you're very close. Yeah. Good job. Nice. In 2019, Swedish environmental activist Greta Thunberg... How dare you? How dare you? Was named the youngest person of the year, time per or named time person of the year. She was what years old? What year? What year? How old she was? No, what year was this? 2019. Oh. She's like 16 or something, right? I thought it was 17? 16. 
is my guess. I'm going to say 16. They have as many bikes as Americans have TVs. I mean, we have three TVs and two bikes, so. Yeah. Yeah. She's 12. She wasn't 12. <laughs> I do know she wasn't that young. Nine and a quarter. 17, 15, 12. Mm-hmm. People often steal bikes and leave them in other places. They're just like borrowing them. Hmm. Interesting. Number seven. She was 16. We were right. Good hmm. job. As many bikes as Americans have trucks? I don't know. I think we... Uh, no, yeah. we don't have that many trucks. There I mean, there's, are... there's two of us. We only have one truck. Yeah. And that, for a yeah. long time, we did not have With Zero one. trucks. Yeah. Yeah, trucks in America, like, look, if you want to talk about something that's totally Texas. That, yes, there are Texans lots. have trucks. Yeah. Like, sometimes more than one truck per person. Like, yeah. A lot of trucks. Here, not so many. Not I mean, there's many. there's a fair there's number some. of trucks in North Carolina, but not too bad. Yeah. In June, all Nordic countries experienced a phenomenon known as the midnight sun, during which the sun remains visible for how many hours every day? 23. That's my guess. 22. Oh, snap. 22 and one half. <laughs> 24. <laughs> 24, it doesn't ever get dark? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. A lot of 24s. Depends on where you live. Yeah. Travel guides are the people who need a it's bike true, to just steal I'm whatever sure. bike they can find and leave on the street. Wow. Depends where, where you live. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay, what do you got? 24. Apparently. It's a lot. 24 is the answer yeah. or what they say i guess you got them long dark winters and those never gets dark summers yeah. the very last question we have is norway might be small but thanks to thousands of inlets called fjords its coastline is how many miles long that's the world's second longest coast behind canada's it's, it's so long it's it's absurd um i don't even know what it would be in miles no idea I mean, just so much coastline. Just love this stuff. Beautiful. I don't know how you count it. Isn't I looked at the answer. I did. Um, is it bigger than a bread basket? Yeah. Um, I'm going to say it's 4,000 miles of coastline. The answer... Is thirty six thousand one hundred and twenty two. That's <laughs> so much. <laughs> it's almost infinite. But yeah, fjords wow. are very beautiful. Yeah. Oh, just show them the recipe that is pretty much. If you want to go ahead and throw everything that sounds disgusting to me on one plate, it would be this recipe right here. Yeah. So this is actually what I thought we were probably getting this box. And yeah. So Audrey doesn't eat any of these things, but when Pretty I think of, much when I think of Scandinavian always. food, I always think of like a lot of fish, like fish heavy, course, fish yeah. forward stuff. This is salmon s- s- more broad. Uh, um, the ingredients are fresh dill. You can also say oh. what it's about. Um, Get this, Danish sandwiches called smorbrod, I'm saying that definitely wrong, yeah. have only one slice of bread. Maybe you're thinking, no, it can't be a sandwich without two slices, but Denmark might be onto something. After all, what better way to show off the delicious ingredients? That's especially true of this classic smorbrod recipe. With pink salmon, fresh cream, and a pop of colorful radish and dill, this local favorite is practically a work of art. Oh, and there's another benefit. You can save that second place, uh, second piece of bread for seconds. Or just the bread. This is uh, dill, parsley, sour cream, fresh horseradish, lemon juice, kosher salt, Danish rye or pumpernickel. I love pumpernickel. I like pumpernickel, but no rye. Uh, eight yeah. ounces of salmon and three radishes. There's like, she would eat the bread and only one of those breads. <laughs> so, eat the radishes. I, I'd eat that. Uh, this sounds good to me. Well, you're not getting that during quarantine times, that's for sure. No? You're not going to make it for me? Well, what do you guys think? Was it fun? Would you want us... To, well, we're probably going to get it next month since we... Oh, I've already been charged. charged. So we're doing yeah. it one more time, at yeah, least. Yeah. I don't know. Do y'all think it was fun? I thought it was kind of fun. Yeah. I mean, I'd probably get it even if this wasn't fun, just because I liked eating things. I think it was things. fun, yeah. We like eating things. I like to eat. Yeah. Who doesn't? Yeah, yeah. Mmm. Mm. Yeah. This was really fun? Good. I'm glad. Good. Um... Next month is uh, Philippines. Philippines, yep. 
I have been charged for it. I don't know when it's coming. I think it'll probably be coming uh, maybe next week. We'll see how it I goes. No I think they're supposed to come on like the 15th or 17th or something like yeah. that. Or maybe they mail that day. Yeah. I don't know. But that was much fun. Good. Oh, good. Uh, I might send you some stuff. Okay. We'll um, eat it here. Yeah, I, I'll do that. Um, yeah, drop me an email at... Uh, is my email address up there? It's not. It's mike at inkdependence.com. Yeah. Um, or you can find me through any of these things. Yeah. Oh, I got my P.O. box. Let me know if you're going to send something to the P.O. box, and I'll go check it more. Otherwise, I'll just sit there for a week yeah, or something before I go check it again. What subscription is it? It is Universal Yums. Wait, there we go. Other side. There you Universalyums.com. Yeah. Not a sponsor. No, we paid for this. Uh, yeah. This box was 15 bucks shipped. Yeah. Which is... Again, there's... Sure, it, could you have gone to down yeah. the street and gotten more stuff? Sure. Yeah, sure, but I can't go down the street to... And get any down. of these things. Yeah. And it was really good, yeah. Sandra's got an empanada truck in her neighborhood. I want an empanada truck. I go by a bunch of um, little taqueria things. You drive day. by a pupuseria. They were open yesterday, too. I've still never had a pupusa. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, well, I'm glad you guys had fun. I'm going to eat the rest of these chips. Yeah, I'm going to work out. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> well, She'd be like, what happened to those chips? I'll be like... Right here. My, my, yeah. my belly. Gotta get to bed. It's almost midnight. Oh, goodness. Awesome. Well, have a good night. And hopefully I'll see some of you guys tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. We'll be back tomorrow. Uh, 5 p.m. Eastern time is our usual time. We'll do yep. that. Uh, we'll be there. I got some pen stuff to show, I think. You have lots of things to show. Do I? Sure. You have like one thing. Two things. You just got mail from Matthew. Oh, got... that's right. Yeah, yeah. I do. I have three things to show. Yep. Um, so yeah, there's that. I gotta edit a video actually about a couple of those things. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, thanks for hanging out. It was uh, good fun, and uh, yeah. thanks for experiencing these uh, cool treats with us. We'll see you later. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.